Hello and welcome to the stream. I'm your host D-Day. Today I am bringing you the part one of the Path of Exile Metamorph Challenge Guide. And this will be covering the first 12 challenges required to obtain the free microtransaction, MTX uh, for short, of the Metamorph League Footprints. So let me jump into gameplay. I'm going to try to be as short and sweet as possible. Uh, this guide is more or less going to be geared toward... All right, that's wonderful. Let's start this up in a little bit later. All right, so short and sweet <laughs> before my computer explodes. The first challenge I'm going to go over is use currency. Uh, this one is pretty simple. Uh, you have to use uh, each one of these six currencies that drop in the game. And then keep in mind, this is going to be a guide more geared towards uh, new players. So if uh, these are all a little too easy for you, if you've already completed these, uh, my part two will be out as soon as I complete the 24 challenges required for it. The armor scraps are these guys, armor scraps. And the way they work is you right click them on any piece of armor. So right click and left click. And then a little tidbit, if you don't know, if you right click and hold shift while left clicking, you can do more than, you just, you can keep clicking. There you go. And 20 is the most quality you can put on an armor piece. The other one is blacksmith whetstones. They go on weapons. So I'll pull out my, my uh, Eclipse Solaris. This one isn't that important. What the blacksmith whetstone does is increases the physical damage. This build doesn't need it, but same thing, right click and on a weapon, increases quality by 1%. So hold down shift, click, you can make it go all the way up to 20. This league, you only need to use the item once. Uh, in previous leagues, you had to uh, do to maximum quality, so a full 20%. Orb of Alterations, they work only on magic items. They re-roll the magic item. Org of, Orb of Augmentation, so this is an alteration. Use it on any magic item to re-roll it. This is an Orb of Augmentation. You use it on a magic item that still has either a prefix or a suffix available. So let me look at my flasks. This flask is a divine flask. A prefix goes before the name, so seething. A suffix goes after the name of dousing. So if you see an item, like a flask for example, that says divine life flask of dousing, that means it still has a prefix open. And an orb of augmentation can be used on a magic item to add a, either a prefix or a suffix onto it. Magic items can only have one prefix and one suffix. Rare items can have up to three prefixes and three suffixes. The next item is uh, an orb of chance. The, what the orb of chance does is it rerolls an item. It has to be white. Uh, the orb of chance is right here. You right click on a white item, on a normal item. It has a large percentage chance of turning it into a magic of random stats. It has a little bit smaller of a chance of turning it into a rare item with uh, more modifiers, so better stats. And it has a slim chance of turning that item if it has a uh, unique uh, base, a uh, unique attached to that base type, it has a very small chance of turning that normal item into a unique. So one example right here, Death's Harp is a bow. It's a death bow. So if I had a normal death bow and I right clicked it with an orb of chance, it most likely will turn into randomly generated magic version of a death bow or it could turn into any generation of a rare death bow or it has a very small percentage chance of turning into Death's Harp. 
I'm not 100% sure if there are other unique death bows out there, but if there is only one death bow, then it can only turn into the death harp. Death harp. Also, uh, some items are going to be excluded from that list. If it is a league specific item, then it needs to have league specific uh, conditions, like a map being opened with that league in, in Zana's map mods, for example. An orb of transmutation turns any uh, normal item, white item, into a magic item. And orb of transmutations are right here. Any normal item into a magic item. So that's the first, uh, first challenge completed. The next challenge that I completed was Complete Metamorph Encounters 1. This is league specific to this league. Uh, so I did this in my very first metamorph uh, encounter uh, back in episode one. You collect a metamorph sample, which is any of the body parts that drop off of enemies that have the small symbol on the map. They are the metamorph samples. And then when you speak to Tane and you combine five metamorph samples, which are five different metamorph samples, of course, to create a metamorph, you get this one, and then when you defeat your first metamorph, you get this one. And those three conditions give you this uh, challenge as well. The next one is complete these quests. Uh, these are, all of these are optional side quests. So one thing you can do, what I check uh, when I do a playthrough, when you go to part one, when you check out this, uh, the waypoint, um, map, which I usually click on the waypoint to uh, to pull this up. If you have quests, like I go to the green marker, Lion Eyes Watch, and then I look at my map to see if I have any exclamation marks still available. And this is how I clean up my axe. I don't have any more exclamation marks available on this map. So then your quests are tracked in this bar down here. And these are all gray because I have completed them all. If you have a main quest open, it is colored in a light tan, I believe is the color, like an ivory white. If it is a side quest, which this challenge uh, requires, it will be blue. It is very noticeably a different color. It is a blue for its optional side quests that are open. And then when you click on it, if it was still available, if you clicked on it, it would highlight where in that act the uh, side quest is required to be done. And if you have any confusion or uh, need any help, I did cover all of my side quests in my uh, run through uh, of my Dead Eye. Uh, episodes 1 through, what was it, 15, I believe? 15 episodes uh, for all of Act 10. So that, these are all optional side quests. And uh, I would recommend doing them while leveling up. Um, we really don't need to be speedrunning the game, to tell you the truth. Speedrunning's fun, but uh, if you're going for challenges like me, just take them out on your way. You need to level up to 68 anyway to be viable for maps at the end. The next challenge that I completed was defeat these Act Bosses 1, which are the first half of the game, Act 1 through Act 5. Uh, you can, If you're having trouble with any of these boss fights, I have them recorded in my uh, my series playthrough. You can watch those if you're having any trouble, or if you if you have any questions at all, uh, leave me a comment on YouTube, join the Discord, ask me directly. I have Discord linked to my cell phone, so if you write, chances are I will respond uh, immediately. Uh, I have a pretty lax job, so uh, and I love uh, having an excuse to take a five and talk to somebody. But yeah, these, you have to do these on your way towards beating the game towards maps. So this one kind of completes itself, defeating Act Bosses 1. Completing these encounters 2, defeating a Rogue Exile. That happened randomly while I was playing. Rogue Exiles are usually very easily easy to spot. Uh, 
monster packs, they tend to travel together and they tend to travel in a straight line towards you. Rogue Exiles kind of zigzag around. They look like your character, so they're going to be a little bit of smaller uh, avatar running around. And they usually use abilities that you yourself uh, have access to. So if you see spellcasters casting crazy spells and it looks unique, it's probably a rogue exile. You just take him out, you get credit for that. Tormented spirits are the green ghosts that are flying around. Chances are you're going to take one of them out. I know I joked at the beginning of the league that uh, it's really difficult to kill them until you have better gear because they move around so much. Uh, and have a little bit more HP than uh, the normal enemy. They tend to try to fly around and look for a rare. They will jump into that rare, possessing it, giving it extra stats, but also making the loot a lot juicier. So defeating the tormented spirit, I'm pretty sure you have to do this before it jumps into a rare. Defeating an essence monster is also very uh, doable during story mode. Essence monsters are the ones that are trapped in ice or crystal, where it's the main one in the middle and then he's surrounded in a circle of other enemies that are also frozen in ice or crystal, whichever one you prefer to call it. Opening up an abyssal trove is an abyss. Those are the little glowing green circles on the ground. When you step on them, it forms a crack that runs away and it spawns monsters. Uh, I believe you follow it, you take out, I believe it's usually three iterations where it, you, it, it hits a node, it spawns a couple of rares, and then it runs off again, usually three times. And then if you defeat it, it uh, they push up a little chest as an offering of, uh, we're sorry, please take this. Uh, so when you open up that trove and it starts spilling out its... Uh, it's loot, you get credit for this one. These four give you credit for this challenge. Uh, the next one was Complete Metamorph Encounters 2. So combining five normal samples, uh, when you do an entire zone and you're making your metamorph with the cho choices, the body parts that you use to form your metamorph are going to be uh, of the uh, four different rarities which white ones are normal, blue ones are magic, yellow ones are rare, and then the brown ones are unique. So these, this challenge uh, requires you to make a metamorph using five normal samples. So f all five of the body parts have to be white in the titles. And then also you combine five with magic where all five of the body parts have to be blue and then combine five rare samples so all parts of the metamorph have to be yellow. So if you have four of them yellow and one of them unique, you're not going to get this challenge. It has to be all five yellow, all five blue, and all five white. So three different metamorphs to get this challenge. Vendor recipes, this one was a little bit trickier because we do have a new one which is Catalyst. And I honestly did not know about hybrid flasks until this league, so that's pretty cool on GGG for making this uh, challenge. This taught me something new. I've been playing since Legacy League and I did not even know that you could make hybrid flasks, which is pretty cool. Cartographer's chisels. The way you do the vendor recipe for this one is you take any hammer that drops. They all have the same uh, look to them. Um, I did it in one of my previous episodes where they dropped with quality. Uh, so what you have to do is you take that hammer, it is a weapon, you can use blacksmith's whetstones to make that hammer all the way, quality it up all the way to 20%. Then grab any map, usually like a, a low tier one or one that you don't like or one that you have a lot of you sell Hello. to the vendor the 20 quality hammer and any map and the vendor will give you a cartographer's chisel See you soon. which is this item here chisel and what it does is when you right click a map uh, if it's white it increases the quality by five percent if it's blue it increases by two if it's uh, rare yellow or if it's unique brown it will only raise it by one um, 
Definitely only use your chisels on white maps. Use your chisels first, then alk them. If you alk them and then chisel them, you'll waste 20 chisels. Uh, or you'd waste 16, because you, you only need 4 to chisel a map to 20 quality when it's white and then alk it. Uh, and what that does, uh, quality adds uh, item quantity and rarity to your maps, so more stuff will drop. They're definitely worth using. I would say don't use them until you hit red maps, though, because you'll burn out of them pretty quick, and the, the drop, the the quality for uh, drop chances is much better to red maps. Like they they they're worth it on red maps. Just save them or sell them for chaos if you want to. Uh, liquidate all of your currency into chaos in trade league to use chaos as a currency to buy gear or buy carries or whatever you want whatever makes you happy catalysts is new to this league you take three catalysts which drop off of metamorph encounters look for the body part that says drops additional catalysts uh, always pick that one because that's what this league is about is the league content you take three of the same catalyst and you vendor it, three of the same catalyst will give you the next tier upgraded catalyst. So I sold three of the same one, I got the next tier, hit accept, and I got credit for that quest. Chaos Orb is a full rare set of uh, armor in each slot. So uh, a wand, a shield, or a two-handed weapon like a bow or a sword or an axe and then a helmet a chest gloves boots two rings a belt and an amulet if you sell all of those uh to the vendor and they are item level 65 to 75 you will get a chaos orb from it if it is below 65 you will get an orb of chance so that's Chaos Orb and Orb of Chance, a full rare set. So anything below 65. So if you have all of these items are, six, let's say 66, or let's say 68. That's when you hit maps, your items are 68. All of them are 68, and then one of your rings is from leveling, you will get an Orb of Chance. Uh, one great thing that I know is when I hit Blood Aqueduct and I start farming the Humility Divination cards for the Tabula Rasa, that zone does have eye level 65 gear in it. You can, at the same time as farming up your Tabula, you can gather the pieces for the Chaos Recipe, you can start selling Chaos Orbs. So what I did is I identified all of the armor pieces that I got because I was looking for upgrades on Solo Cell Found and then I was in vendoring them in bulk to the vendor for Chaos Orbs. I was doubling up on that one. Gem Cutter's Prisms, this one's pretty cool. You'll occasionally get gems that drop with quality on them. Frostwall 12%, Ray Spectre 9%, Ice Sphere 5%. Fork, 15%. That's one. That one's actually worth keeping. Uh, all of these that you get, if you vendor these in bulk, where uh, the quality uh, added together is over 40%, you will get a gem cutter's prison back, which the prism you can right click and you can put onto a gem to increase its quality and increased quality has an additional stat uh gems go all the way up to level 20 quality 20 so that's when people talk about 2020 gems uh though that's the highest tier that you can get your gems at the 20 quality is the additional like uh this minions from supported skills deal 48 damage let me look at this one real quick if you quality up one it added 1% more damage. No, that's what it is. For every 2% uh, percent minions from supported skills deal 1% increased damage. So that means it can go up to 10% increased damage. Which is definitely worthwhile. Uh, and then to clarify, 2020 is the best you can get 
And then you can also Val Orb, where you can corrupt it. And there's a chance that you can break that cap and make a level 21 gem. And always quality your gems before you Val them, because you cannot quality them after you Val them. So you have, if you have a regular 20 gem and you Val it to level 21, you cannot quality up it it up to 20 afterwards so then you have a level 21 gem but with zero quality so always quality your gems up to 20 before valing them uh you have a small chance of getting a 21 20 gem which is amazing uh now in since temple of atsawaddle has come out um uh, you can get double corrupted items which another corruption that's possible is that the quality goes to 23 so usually people prefer 2120 gems because the level uh, increase is much better than the quality increase but sometimes you can get the val corruption for a level 20 23 gem so the quality is 23. some gems are better with quality some gems are better with level depends on what you want and then the double corruption from the temple of atsawaddle has a very small chance of giving you a level 21 23 gem level 21 with 23 quality which that is the best gem so just just in case somebody nerd raged out there with me saying 2020s are the best that's a clarification the last one that i had to look up uh, this was pretty cool hybrid flask any mana flask and any uh life flask normals i would recommend with one Orb of Fusing. You vendor that, those three items, you will get a hybrid flask back. When I did that, I got credit for the entire challenge here. Defeat these act bosses too is the second half of the game. Same thing. You have to beat these uh, bosses to progress towards map, towards beating the game once. So this is uh, required if you're going to just regularly playing the game and beating the game. That one popped. Building a map device. This one popped for me when uh, I started doing the epilogue quest line, which is completely new to this leak. This is pretty cool. I think this is cool. I kind of miss the fact that uh, I'm a fan of OG Shaper. I love the Shaper storyline. I wasn't really happy that they changed it to include the Elder. And now they bumped that as well. So now. Uh, now the end game involves these uh, Elder Slayers, which I'm still getting to know of, but I started the epilogue quest. I got to talking to uh, the officer Kirak, which is a new character for this league, for this expansion, and he took me to Zana, and then I got a map device. So that uh, popped, and I wasn't even, I didn't even know I was going for it. It's part of the storyline. Complete these encounters to open a unique strong box. So this one thing that I can recommend, I got really lucky during one of my lab runs, I had a unique strong box that spawned all the spiders in one of my episodes. Uh, I got it that way. You can also get unique strong boxes from, I believe from Zana dailies. There might be uh, options where she puts you into a map that requires you to open a unique strong box, I believe it is. Uh, you can also, if you wanted to, I wouldn't recommend it, use your chance orbs on white strong boxes with that really small chance of it turning into a unique strong box. I wouldn't recommend it because the chances are really low. Uh, it'd be a lot easier to just play more maps. It's very rare from what I understand these unique strong boxes, but I have found at least one every league. Uh, and just pop it and defeat it and you get uh, the credit for this one. You can also go into backslash trade 820 or backslash global 820. And if somebody's selling it, you can pay them chaos orbs or whatever they want for it to pop the unique strong box. Uh, I honestly wouldn't recommend doing anything over 5C because these are not that rare. And I don't think there's anything amazing that drops from these strong boxes anyway. So it's just, it's not even a full league challenge that you're paying for. It's one of four parts. So 
I wouldn't recommend paying more than 5c for this one. Completing a Legion encounter is pretty easy. If you are doing the uh, Zana modifier on your maps for, um, what was it? Fortune favors the brave. I've hit Legion a couple of times now. Legions are the purple crystals that when you click on them, it unfreezes an entire army, or actually it shows you an entire frozen army. And all of them that you shatter when the timer breaks, you fight them all over again, they drop loot. That's a Legion encounter. That's from Legion League. Uh, it's honestly my favorite league so far. I loved it so much. I don't know if Legion League really was that amazing or if it's also because Cyclone was finally fixed. <laughs> but Legion combined with the Cyclone fix made it my favorite league. Completing a Betrayal safe house. This one I did on uh, stream. It's also in one of my episodes. Uh, you just you keep doing Jun dailies. You keep selecting uh, Bargain. Bargaining uh, it, it feels kind of counterintuitive because interrogate gives you the information required, but bargaining and um, what is it? It's the killing option. It's always the option on the right. Ranks them up. The higher rank they are, the more information they give you when you bargain with them or move them around. So keep clicking the right option until a safe house is available. And when you click on Jun and you go show investigation, it's this bar that fills up here. So each time you pick the option on the right for bargain, it does something random or you you kill them, which ranks them up. They go from rank zero to rank three. And uh, every time you bargain, you have a chance of gaining intelligence, which will fill this bar up. And when these built bars are full, they're all four of them are separate. When when one of them is full, this turns into a button which says, uh, "Go to the safe house." When you click on it, portals open around Jun herself, and then you have to run that uh, that safe house. When you defeat it, you get this check mark as well. Uh, I looked through all of the other challenges. I don't think there's anything else required from Jun for this league, so I'm kind of happy about that. Then the last one was upgrade an item to faded item. Uh, what you do is you click on Navali, you hit Seek Prophecy. Uh, you need these items, silver coins. Every prophecy costs one silver coin Hello. to seek. And when you're too full, she tells you it's too remain. many prophecies, but you can look at it with, with the letter H on your keyboard. Uh, you can keep, what is this, one, two, three, four, what is this, two, four, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes, okay. <laughs> seven, you can have seven of these uh, quests open, or prophecies open at a time. Uh, and then some of them require you to, like, look at this one. You will defeat the Bone Queen while holding Queen's Decree. I got this quest from Navali just by hitting Seek. Most of the time what I do is in between maps, I just tag Seek a whole bunch of times because a lot of these things uh, drop off of... Wow, okay, so all of these are kind of stuck. Okay, so this one. You will discover an area with large packs of sea witches. Uh, by, run, by running my maps, sometimes I clear two, three, four of these things just by running maps. So all I do is I keep clicking seek until I kind of get stuck like I am right now. I believe this one requires me to do something specific. You will greatly enhance the quality of a map with a single cartographer's chisel. That means one chisel will make it uh, quality 20. So I would use one chisel on a, uh, what's it called? On a unique map, for example, to increase the quality to 20%. That's worth it to me. And like you do this and eventually you'll get qu quests that's, that sound like this. You will defeat the Bone Queen while holding Queen's Decree. These are faded items, which I actually have a Queen's Decree. Yeah, I have a Queen's Decree here. So I don't even need to equip it. I just have to have it in my inventory. And if I go defeat the, uh, what was it? The Bone Queen? 
You will defeat the Bone Queen while holding Queen's Decree. It's in my inventory. It counts as holding it. If I defeat the Bone Queen, it will upgrade Queen's Decree into... Uh, what is it? I forgot what it was called. It's, it's a better version of this sword. Which is actually pretty good for summoners. But I don't want to use a two-hander. I like having a shield on me for the block and for the increased uh, stats. I care more about that than the plus one to the the zombies, specters, and skeletons. Necromancer has no problem with DPS. It's survivability that's my issue. Anyways, you complete that. I believe I completed uh, Brisk Wrap. I did that one. It was super easy. I went backwards. I defeated uh, that enemy with Brisk Wrap in my inventory, and I got credit. It was also in one of my previous episodes. And then that one popped, which was my last one, which gave me the credit for the quest. Crafting modifiers. This one's pretty simple. After a while, you talk to Helena, and she gives you this thing, crafting bench. And the crafting bench, you put it down in your uh, hideout, and whenever you put something into here, it will let you craft something on it, as long as it is not a unique. Unique items you cannot craft onto unique items. You can craft sockets and socket colors, but you can't add uh, suffixes and prefixes to unique items, unless it's a specific unique item uh, that lets you craft onto it, which I think those are actually brand new. I haven't come across any of the ones that you can craft on. But what you do is, uh, if you go to options and UI, I believe, show full descriptions, click this thing, hit save. It lets you hold alt on an item. And there it tells you prefix tier nine mana, prefix tier one life, suffix tier three lightning resistance, suffix tier two of increased stun duration of, on enemies. So before I crafted onto it, it had two prefixes and two suffixes, meaning it has room for one more prefix and one more suffix. You can only craft once, you can't craft both. Uh, so what I decided to do was craft another suffix on it, which was fire resistance. Resistances or suffixes uh, life, mana, flat, stats, like attributes are prefixes. Uh, what you do is you plug it in and then you select from the list of what you want to craft onto it. This is a belt I crafted on. Let's see, my prefix, suffix, suffix, suffix. It has three suffixes, two prefixes open. I can craft a prefix onto it. So if I put it in here, I have a list of prefixes, but I can't put any more suffix on it because it has three suffixes already on it. So I could put a prefix on it, but I'm going to be upgrading these gloves, so I'm not going to waste the currency putting something random onto these gloves. But it's as simple as all of these slots, amulet, belt, body armor, it's all of the slots. Let's see, shield or quiver weapon. So weapon could be two-handers. So if you're running a two-hander build, uh, you have to just do another craft for shield or quiver. If you, if what I like to do is when I play the game casually, when I beat part one, Kitava, and you start act six and you get hit with that negative resistances, it really hurts. Act six gets scary with all the fire damage that you take all of a sudden. If you're not taking care of your fire resistance specifically, Act 6 will be a wall for you. So what I like to do is uh, defeat Katava. I get hit with the Cruel Affliction negative resistances. I go to my hideout and then I plug in all of my gear and I craft resistances on everything that has stuff available. And uh, see my amulet has cold resistance on it. My helmet has extra energy shield. My shield has extra lightning res on it. My ring has extra fire resistance on it. This ring, whoops. 
this ring is prefix suffix 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 so it has a prefix slot open but since it already has 71 to max life i can't craft life on top of it again because it already used that prefix so that's why i don't have anything crafted on here but you only need one ring not both rings but you craft on each piece and you'll get credit for this one as well I'm going to skip over itemized samples. I got this one right after getting the 12th challenge. I will start the 24 challenge part two with itemized samples. And then the last one that I got, yes, this is the last one. Obtain rewards from metamorphs. So every time you're putting together a metamorph with, with Tane and you're looking at all of the choices that you have for each of the five body parts, when you hover over them, they tell you what they will make the monster stronger in, like life regen, for example, that is kind of rough. Uh, I would say avoid life leech and avoid life regen uh, unless you have a build like summoner where you can just hang back and everything just shreds the the metamorph down avoid life leech avoid uh life regen life regen specifically avoid life regen and go for all of them that says drops additional currency drops additional divination cards drops additional essences you'll get stuff that sound it, it's not going to be drops additional generic i think that's just playing it once i don't harbinger item is the currency shards uh uniques it drops additional weapons trinkets i'm not sure of talismans it says it scarabs it says it prophecies is like silver coins parandas coins metamorph is catalysts maps and then the trinkets might be map fragments no fragments is right here so yeah just choose the options that uh you don't see very often. Undefinitely always go for Metamorph. Always click the one that says drops additional catalysts because that is what this league is about, is about catalysts. And oh man, I just now noticed the only one I haven't run come across yet is Breach. So it'll drop Breach splinters. That's pretty cool. And yeah, that is a uh, me trying to talk really fast. I tried to not dilly-dally on anything. I'm noticing that I did go over 30 minutes. I'm hoping that you guys found this uh, helpful. I really, really want to push for people to give this game a chance. Every single person that I talk to in, in, in person about this game, they get excited. They play the game. They get through two, three, four acts, maybe, and then they're like, this game's too hard. And I really want to be able to get people to play the game, try it out. Uh, I did not learn everything immediately. As a fun fact, in Legacy League, I had four exalts drop for me. I had no idea what exalted orbs were. I read the description and I used exalted orbs on rare items that I vendored. <laughs> it's bad. I mean, give this game a chance. If you have any questions, contact me on Discord or in the comments on YouTube. I try to answer every single comment left on YouTube. I answer, I definitely answer everyone that writes on Discord because we're still a really small channel. Uh, I really would love just to help anybody if I can help you, if this video helped you, hit it with a thumbs up. Let me know that you watched it, that you enjoyed it, that it's that I'm doing something worthwhile. Because uh, it's very difficult for me to record these offline because I'm pretty much talking to myself right now. And if I see views with no thumbs up or with thumbs down or with negative comments, it makes me feel like... I don't, I shouldn't do this. I shouldn't spend my time doing these guides, uh, but I really want to. And if this helps you, it, let me know by hitting the thumbs up. Let me know by writing a comment. I'm not looking for a thank you. I'm just looking to see that somebody got a positive experience from this. So those are the first 12 challenges. They get you the metamorph footprints 
which uh, they look like little mud mud splatters. It's a little hidden because I have this entire army following me around. But they're little mud splatters. It's a cool little effect you get. And then if you're curious, uh, the armor set that I'm wearing is the Pure Light armor set. And the uh, minion effects that I have is the, the Celestial minion effect on specters and on zombies. And then the uh, celestial skeletons look pretty sick too. They have little globes inside. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching and uh, uh, I hope to see you guys next episode. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you can hit the like button in the bottom right and go ahead and click on my guy here to subscribe to the channel, that would help us out a lot. Also, if you want to watch me stream on Twitch, I stream Monday through Friday uh, from 4 to 5 p.m. Central. So I'll see you then.